Hi everyone, my name is Gabe, and in this video I'm going to share with you how I use Desmos to introduce the definition of the derivative to my calculus class. So if you've never been to Desmos.com before, what you'll see is this is their homepage, and right towards the center there's a big red start graphing button. I'm going to go ahead and click that, and that's going to bring up Desmos' graphing calculator. On the right side, you'll see the Cartesian plane, and on the left side, you'll see a table where you can enter functions, points, or anything of interest that you'd like to add to your graph. So you can go ahead and get started graphing right now by typing in any function you'd like, say y equals sine of x, or you could type in something such as g of x equals tangent of x, and then it'll go ahead and it'll sketch both of those for you. Now to the right side of the table, I'm gonna click the x's to clear out both of these functions. And before we begin, I'm going to come all the way over to the right side of the Cartesian plane and click on the little wrench for graph settings. And I'm going to change two things. First of all, I'm going to change to projector mode. This just makes all the lines a little darker. It makes the numbers a little darker. It makes everything a little easier to see. And I'm also going to select right next to the grid. This is going to get rid of the grid, and we don't need it for the purpose of this video. However, if you'd like to keep it, feel free to keep it. Okay, so here's where I want to get started. I want to start off with a function. Let's pick any function that we can dream up. I'm going to use the function 0.5 times x squared. You can feel free to enter any function that you'd like in here. So what Desmos will do is it'll go ahead and it'll plot this function for you, which is great. But the thing that makes Desmos real interesting is now immediately below it, we can go ahead and we can start thinking about evaluating this function at certain numbers. So for instance, maybe I want to know what f of 3 is. And we see that f of 3 is 4.5. And if I click on the little icon to the left of f of 3, it'll convert it from the decimal representation to the fractional representation. So this is one of the powerful features of Desmos, but it's even a little more powerful than that. So let's say I don't just want to evaluate my function at 3. Let's say I want to evaluate my function at a host of different numbers. I can actually type in f of a, and you'll be prompted to add a slider for a. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the A, and now you'll see that I have a slider for A. So I can actually take this point right here, and I could drag it to the left and to the right. So what this is doing is it's actually substituting these values into my function and spitting out the result in real time. So this is cool and all, but let's pretend we actually want to visualize the point on our graph corresponding to the point A, F of A. Well, that's something that Desmos can do for us as well. So instead of just typing in f of a, I'm going to go back up here, put in a left parenthesis, a comma, and then close off this guy right here. And what you'll see now is now I have the point a f of a on my graph. And as I slide a around, that point will slide around as well. Now, another way that I can move this point is I can actually click on the point and drag it up, down, left, and right. So I can move the point around as I'd like. Okay. So, I said earlier that the purpose of this video is going to be to share how I introduce the definition of the derivative to my calculus students. So I don't like them to get too bogged down with the notation, especially since I'm using a's and f of a's. I want them to have in their mind this x, f of x type point. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click label. And if you just click label, what it'll do is it'll give you the x coordinate and the y coordinate. And what you'll see is that you can move this point around and it changes that x coordinate and y coordinate. But immediately to the right of label, there is a line where we can type. So I'm going to go ahead and type in x, f of x. So I want to think about this as the first point on my secant line as I'm trying to have this tangent line conversation. Now, to keep things from getting too wild, you'll see that if I slide this point too far to the left or too far to the right, it vanishes. So I'm going to say for the purpose of this video, let's go ahead and let's put a restriction on a by clicking on either negative 10 or 10. And let's let a just go from negative 4 to positive 4. And I'm going to leave the step size blank. Feel free to go ahead and play around with that if you will. All right, so now what we'll see is that the furthest to the left a can go is negative 4. The furthest to the right a can go is positive 4. So I've got one point on my graph. Well, we know that in order to get a secant line, we need two points. So let's come up with our second point. The way that I'm going to come up with the second point is I'm going to have the x-coordinate be a plus h and the y coordinate be f of a plus h. Now you'll see that we're prompted to add a slider for h. I'm gonna go ahead and click on h, and now what you'll see is we do have a second point on our graph. So we can drag the first point around still, and that'll slide the second point around, keeping the distance between those x coordinates the same. 
or I can click on the second point and drag that around, and what you'll see is that changes the value of h. I want to think about my h as my delta x, so I kind of know that I want to think about it as being small. So I'm actually just going to make h vary between 0 and 1. Okay. So what you'll see now is the maximum distance between the x coordinates of this point is 1. I'm also going to go ahead and label that second point. I'll call it a x plus h, f of x plus h. So now I've got two points on my graph. I can feel free to slide these around as I like. Now I want to find the equation of the secant line passing through these points. And I'm going to break that down into a couple steps. I'm first going to find the slope of the line passing through these two points. So remember that's my change in my y coordinates, which is going to be f of a plus h minus f of a, divided by the change in the x coordinates, which is a plus h minus a, which is just going to be h. So now what we'll see is that as I slide either of these points around, it's computing the slope in real time. Okay, so I've got my slope down. The last thing I need to do is sketch the equation of my secant line. So I'm going to use the point slope form of the line with the slope m that we just computed, and I'm going to use the point a f of a. So the equation of the secant line is just going to be y equals m times x minus a plus f of a. And there we have my secant line. And what you'll see is that as I move either of these points around, my secant line still passes through both of these points. All right. Okay. So where things get even more interesting is if we come back to H, remember H is what we're thinking of as our Delta X. We know that finding equations of secant lines is pretty simple, right? But if we go ahead and we drag these two points so that they lie right on top of one another, what you'll see is that that line vanishes and you can kind of look down the left side of the graph and see why it's because your slope is undefined. So this is where I would traditionally go ahead and introduce the limit definition of the derivative. Say, hey, we can't make h zero, but we can make h get as close to zero as we want using limits. So that's where I would step away from the, um, from the computer and have that conversation about the definition of the derivative. But what's, what something else that Desmos can do that's quite a bit more powerful than most just traditional graphing calculators is once you're done having that conversation, you can actually come back to Desmos and say, hey, we know about this thing called the derivative now. So I'm going to actually go ahead and graph the equation of the tangent line by saying y equals not m, but f prime of a, remember that's the slope of the tangent line at the point a f of a, times x minus a plus f of a. And now what we have is we have this tangent line, the black line over here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hide the red point and its label. And now what you'll see is that as you drag this point around, you have the equation of the tangent line. Now, this was really cool and all, but what's even neater is a lot of this conversation that we just had, we didn't even reference the function. We started this by typing f of x equals 0.5x squared, but let's say I wanted to step away and have this conversation again about sine of x. Well, all this right here is already in place. So I already have my two points on the graph of my function. I can change h, I can change a, and we can look at how tangent lines interact with secant lines. And something else that's cool is that we can actually press play, the play button next to h, and what we'll see is that'll actually start changing the value of h. So say we want to speed that up or slow that down, we can go ahead and we can click the arrows over on the right side next to H, and that'll actually show us these two points getting closer and closer together. For a little more emphasis, let me change the function to three sine of X. Okay, I hope you found something in this video helpful. If you do have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Thank you, Mike.